Hi everyone and happy Wednesday. The end of the year holidays are fast approaching and for me this usually means that I can also look forward to having snow on the ground. And since Christmas is fast approaching that means I'm feeling ready to start making some greeting cards and so that will be the focus of my video this week. Since I intend to make quite a few of these greeting cards, I want to keep my process very simple. And to keep it that way, I'm going to work with one main color for this video. I'm going to be using sepia. And a little bit later on, I'll also add some iridescent paint. What's going to make this little painting that I'm creating for my greeting card come to life will be how I work on developing my values. As I'm continuing to work on blending this out a little bit, I want to share with you that I have a number of these videos where I create these simple little greeting cards uh, for holidays, for the holidays in particular. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'll share for the next few weeks, I'll share 
an extra link in my video description on some of the other videos I've created in the past in case you haven't had a chance to see them. And if that's something that you're interested in doing yourself and you need some ideas, then those videos can uh, probably guide you along. Since I'm working with just one color, a value contrast is going to be even more important in this little um, painting that I'm making. So I'm going to start to add a little bit more color intensity on the bottom part of the painting. The reason I'm not doing it in the upper portion of the painting just yet is because my hills are still a little bit wet and if I went and tried to work in my quote-unquote night sky before I let that dry, that color, that intense color would bleed into my hills and all, all of a sudden my snowy hills would become anything but. So I'm going to let that all dry and then I'll come in and add some more contrast. With watercolors, the easiest way to build up value contrast is always to start working with your lightest colors first. And so I start by working with a very light wash and then slowly but surely I start to build up my color intensity. I want to let you in on a little something that's going on while I'm working on video <laughs> editing. Um, I have recently had to make changes to my work setup, um, both my editing setup and also my painting setup because I'm having continual issues with my neck that seem to not be getting better. And I'm also having some pretty um, challenging times with my right arm, which is my dominant hand and the hand that I normally paint with. So I'm having to change things around and I'm bringing this up because I am currently working with a setup where, where I don't think I have all the, the right equipment to make my sound quality optimal. And so I think as I'm listening to this that um, where my mic is currently positioned, it's not ideal. And so it may sound like I'm a little bit far, and that is because I am a little bit <laughs> further away from my mic than I normally would be. But I really want to focus on doing things um, in a more ergonomic way so that I can continue to do this for as long as possible. And that means me really having to make my health a priority. And so um, I apologize for this. I'm working on hopefully making things better and hopefully in the near future I'll have this resolved so that uh, the sound quality can return to um, something better. So in the meantime I want to thank you for your patience and I hope I'll be able to resolve this issue um, very soon.
now I'm going to start working with my pens and I pulled out a pen that I am working with for the very first time. It is something one of my friends here on YouTube recommended to me and it is basically a dotting pen. Now it is expensive. <laughs> I think the very first time I looked at it, I, there was a bit of sticker shock for me and I couldn't really see the point of me buying a pen that was so expensive when I could just basically do all of this on my own. But <laughs> that being said, as I mentioned earlier, I'm having a lot of struggles with my right arm, my dominant hand. Um, and I have quite a bit of pain and I'm doing what I can at the moment to take care of it. And I also need to start thinking of working in different ways. And I love stippling, but stippling, unfortunately, really wreaks havoc on my wrist and my elbow for whatever reason. So I thought, well, you know, if there was ever a good time for me to give this pen a try, and now is that time. And like I said, this is my first time working with it. And I have to say, I love it. <laughs> It is awesome and it is especially good because as I'm working, I don't really have to worry about applying too much pressure. I can just move the pen very gently above the paper and it does the work for me. Um, it creates the little dots that I would create, you know, one at a time when I was working without it. And I am working right now um, with very little pain. In fact, I can't, I can say that I don't feel like this pain, this pen is aggravating my wrist or my elbow. So that is a big win for me. And so for that reason, I will uh, probably continue to work with this pen. <laughs> it is pretty awesome. Um, and I think for me, it is definitely well worth the price. So with this said, I want to say a huge thank you to my friend who mentioned this to me on YouTube a while ago. That's one of the wonderful little things about our creative community. We can share these little tips and, and tricks with each other to help each other out, I guess, along the way. And for me, this has been definitely um, a very helpful tool for me to have on hand and I would never have known about it if it hadn't been for the fact that someone mentioned it to me. So again, a huge thank you for doing that. Using my clear ruler to give myself a few little guidelines always helps when it comes to drawing vertical lines. I want my lines to look organic and so I prefer not to draw all of them in with my ruler, but if I don't have guidelines, sometimes my lines end up looking a little bit more wonky than I would actually like them to look. <laughs> so the guidelines help a tremendous amount and um, I love to do that, whether the lines are short or even a little bit longer.
All right, it's now time to add a little bit of pizzazz to this little painting. And normally I would go for star gold. You know how much I love my star gold if you've been watching this channel for a bit. But I have this um, palette of paints from Kramer Pigment uh, that have other colors in it, other iridescent paints in it that are also really beautiful and I don't use them nearly enough. And I think this royal gold satin is going to be the perfect color match um, for this painting. I think it's going to look really, really nice against that sepia. And because it's got a little bit more of a burnish, I guess, a burnished look to it, it doesn't look um, nearly as yellow. And so maybe it, 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 it just looks better. <laughs> I'll just say that. So I'm using it to paint my moon. And yes, I know, maybe it looks more like a sun because it's, you know, what we consider to be the typical colors of the sun and not necessarily the colors of the moon. But I'm pretty sure many of you out there have also seen what looks like an orange um, moon or a red moon or different colors of moons. So I'm just throwing caution to the wind and I'm going with that, even though it's not the type of moon we see all the time. <laughs> it's what I'm going with for this painting. And I chose it specifically because I thought it would look nicer with that sepia. And I actually think it looks really nice with that sepia. So I'm sticking uh, with this decision and I'm really happy to have made it because I love this color. And I don't feel like I have enough opportunities or I don't create enough opportunities for myself to use it. So I'm super excited to use it in this painting in particular. I've decided I also want to add some dots of that same gold in my night sky and they will either represent stars or they could represent snow glimmering under the moonlight. Um, it really is whatever you want it to be and I think for me because of course this is sort of a win winter themed card face, uh, for me it's going to represent snow. So yellow snow. Hey, whatever. <laughs> it's all about having fun and doing whatever you find works for your painting. And for me, this definitely works. Since I had so much fun playing with it earlier, I've decided to bring out my dotting pen again, and I am going to create what is going to look like a little frame for my painting. Now, the fact that I added tape to my paper is also creating a frame, but this is going to help make my painting stand out a little bit more from that white frame, considering that there are some areas of the painting that are still pretty light, i.e. the little snow mounds that are in my painting. And so this little black dotted frame is going to look really nice and it's going to help to separate the snow hills from the rest of my frame. I'm feeling as though the top portion of my painting needs a little bit more dark value contrast so I'm going to come in with my dotting pen again and I'll add a little bit of stippling to the exterior of one of my rings and then I think I'll be ready to call it done. Choosing the royal gold satin as the iridescent paint for this painting I think was the perfect choice and I'm super happy that that's the color I went with. Now of course my card is not really a card until I actually stick this little painting to some uh, cardstock and once I have done that then, then my painting will really fully be done. Um, 
I really loved making this little card so much that I made other ones and every single time I made one I made them slightly different. I didn't make it too different because I again wanted to keep this process very simple and easy for myself and so I changed little details here and there and in just a moment I will show you some of the other ones I have made and I'm super excited to start writing my special little holiday messages to the people I love and send them in the mail. Is making greeting cards one of your holiday traditions? And if so, is this something that you would like to try? At the very least, I hope this little video offers you some inspiration for things that you can create for yourselves or for your loved ones during the holiday season. And if you need some more ideas, don't forget to check out my video description where I have a link for another card making video. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!